combinations and permutations. Counting for a single event is quite simple. You just count. Roll a die one time, any outcome is one over six. For independent multiple events, we can multiply. But for dependent multiple events, we must use factorials. Therefore, we need to know what is a factorial and how can it be used. Let's start with simple counting. For this first example, we own a seaside beachwear shop. You want to order Hawaiian shirts for this beachside business. There are 15 styles available in six different sizes. You want to order one shirt of each style in each size. For counting independent multiple events, how many shirts will you order? The math is quite simple. We'll use multiplication. 15 styles, six sizes equals 90. Now here's another example of simple counting. An experiment has three steps. Step one has two outcomes. Step two has three outcomes. And step three has two outcomes. How many possible outcomes are there? Again, for counting multiple independent events, we use multiplication. Two times three times two equals 12 potential outcomes. But now consider this. In a fruit basket are six types of fruit. You were told that you can pick two. You could pick the apple and the banana. You could pick the grapes and the pear, or the banana and the pomegranate. How many combinations of pairs of fruit could you choose? And to do this kind of calculation will require factorials. A factorial will be designated with a lowercase n followed by an exclamation point. And that means multiply the number by each lower integer. For instance, five exclamation point or five factorial is five times four times three times two times one, which would be 120. Incidentally, the value of zero factorial is always one. The exclamation point is the factorial symbol. It's a shorthand meaning multiplication. With values 0 through 10, it's easy enough to figure these factorials. 5 factorial is 120. 6 factorial is 720. 7 factorial, 5040. But let me show you a real world example. As I was on my way to a coffee shop one Sunday morning to meet a friend, I noticed on the doorway going into the restaurant this advertisement. 465 pairings, you pick two. And I immediately had to figure out how did they come to the number 465? Don't worry, I'm gonna show you. But first I wanna talk about combinations and permutations. Combinations are the number of ways a set can be selected from a population as a group. In other words, the order does not matter. We go out to a pizza joint and you can get a three topping pizza for only $9.99. And there's a list of possible toppings. Here we see all the possible meats, vegetables, and more that we could choose for our pizza. You have to choose three. How many combinations of pizzas could we order? Answering that would require using a counting rule for combinations. Let's start a little more simply with our fruit example. From a group of six types of fruit, how many combinations of two could be selected? Here is the formula for the counting rule for combinations. And here is what it would look like in action. The first part reads how many combinations of two can be selected from six. And the math involves six factorial, two factorial, and six minus two. 
Using our simple table of factorials, we could do the math and come up with a total of 15. Or, here's something you can do. Remember that Google is also a calculator. You could enter the factorial expression into a Google search window and you would get the result. 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 4 factorial equals 15. Now we should talk about permutations. Permutations are the number of sets that can be arranged from a population. In this case, the order matters. Event X has three possible outcomes, A, B, and C. There are three combinations, A, B, A, C, and B, C, because the order doesn't matter. However, for a permutation, the order would matter. A, B is different than B, A. A, C different than C, A. And B, C different than C, B leaving us a total of six permutations. You may be familiar with a combination lock. It is a lock in which you twist a dial one direction and then back the other direction and then again in the original direction and those three numbers will open the lock. We call it a combination lock, but now you know that because the order matters of those three numbers, it is actually a permutation lock. Likewise, there is also a counting rule for permutations, which we could also apply to our fruit example. From a group of six types of fruit, how many permutations of two can be selected? Here is the formula for permutations. If we add the values specific to our example, how many permutations of two can be selected from six? The answer is six factorial divided by six minus two factorial, which equals 30. To help with the math, I've created an Excel spreadsheet for combinations and permutations, both of which can be easily done using Excel formulas. We're going to look at that next. And when we do, I'll finally explain the secret of the UPIC2 465 pairings.